Well, I think that's something to, get to come back to, but I'd like, I'd like to move you on to design science. Oh, design science, yes. And we'll, we'll eventually get to how we apply this to a radio show, um, because I'm sure I'm going to convince JD about this eventually, um, that it could affect how we, how we, how we approach doing, a, doing radio and mixing music and so forth. Um, but where, where do you think those, the idea of design science is coming from? Uh, where have you come across it? Yeah, well, I, I came across it when I when I was at school, and my art master, who who um, as a painter, and he he learned at St Ives. He he worked at St Ives for about five years before coming into my school, and he. So all I know about design science is really from what I picked up from him, and um, he talked a lot about Buckminster Fuller. And uh, in the time I was at school, Buckminster Fuller was was um, well known. He he um, in 1963 he he uh, coined the phrase design science. And what he meant was was um, the, the a, a systematic form of design, where you you undertook research, you were methodical, you you looked at um, both the, the 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 article itself that you were designing, as well as the needs and the the, the problems that you were trying to solve. So a, a comprehensive approach, a very systematic approach. Others will think that um, design science is the the scientific study of design, when in fact. Um, those two de different definitions are very complementary. It's rather like the yin and the yang, you know. Um, so, if you think of design, you can think of, um, say, artistic design, fashion design. You can think of, of of things that need to be designed to solve practical problems, and in, quite often they are structural designs. And um, Buckminster Fuller himself was an architect, but he also designed a car, uh, the Dymaxion car, and of course he designed the geodesic dome which he's famous for right right and um there was a, a world fair um in new york in it was just before the second world war 1939 and um the world was full of uncertainty and um it had the spanish civil war with the fascists versus the the um the republicans and so on and it was, it was really quite difficult and um then the war actually broke but the purpose of the World Fair in New York in 1939 was um, to try and, and instill some sort of hope for the future. And Buckminster Fuller stood for that. Um, he, he was seeking um, to, to gain solutions to problems facing humanity. Th those were the sorts of words he used. Um, and, yeah, he, he, beca he, he became very methodical. I think in today's terms what's really interesting is that... Um, we would use, in describing Buckminster Fuller, we'd use two other words quite a lot. One is innovation, and the other is sustainability. And um, his approach to design was to, to anticipate problems and design for the future, for humanity, um, uh, which to give, invariably gave rise to innovation and uh, because of things, solutions that hadn't been thought of before. And he was thinking of humanity in the future, which was the theme of that World Fair in New York, um, and that was about the future. Uh, sustainability comes into play. So it's a very applied approach. It is. It is very applied, and um, he, he, I, I think predominantly he was involved with, with architecture, but um, his approach, his practices, and um, the, the um, concepts that he believed in um, were... I mean, he used to disseminate that. He used to give lots and lots of public talks. And in fact, there's something called the Buckminster Fuller Foundation. And if people Google that, yeah. they will quite quickly on the first page, um, they will find um, really what he stood for and how that comes into play in, in processes of, for innovation in design and uh, for practices for, for sustainability uh, in design. Okay. Well, I think we should, should have a bit more music now. Did, did, did you did you have an idea, an overall idea, when you selected the tracks you wanted to play? Have uh, you got a, an overall aim in what you're trying to? I, I, I've got about. I, in case we run out, I, yeah. I've got about eight, eight or nine tracks, and um, I, I don't think I had anything for the overall, um, all eight of them, eight or nine of them. But I've I've certainly uh, got ideas that bridge from one to another. Uh, for example, um, Laurel Canyon. Um, comes into play. That was a community in, um, in Los Angeles where quite a, a lot of the blues um, musicians used to hang out, or they lived there. And um, 
uh, what else? Um, also, some some of the, the the themes, the meanings of the songs, I think, are uh, they, they they capture my my interest. You know, like this next track is um, from Joan Armour Trading, and it's called Rosie. Um, it's um, it's about a transvestite and how the transvestite is trying to tease but is also trying to go too far and um, Joan Armour Trading gives a very good good uh, intro for that I think <laughs> 